town and, you know, bother them because they left us here to do this alone. Uh, but I'm joined by some fantastic guests. We're going to be taking questions from Spectrum. Let me uh, go around the table and uh, let's introduce ourselves. Which direction? You, you first, uh, your direction. <clears throat> Hi everyone, I'm uh, Sean Tracy, the Technical Director of Content. Um, yeah, working on technically directing content. Do you have a lot of content that needs technically direction? Absolutely. We have a lot of content that needs technical direction uh, within it. Um, it's just basically explaining how things need to get done, developing pipelines, and working on tools uh, with the guys to make all the crazy content that we, uh, we implement <coughs> within Star Citizen. Cool. Who are you? I'm Jake Ross. I am uh, a last minute addition to this uh, lovely show. Yes, and, uh, I think we announced that Eric, uh, Eric Davis had been supposed to be on. He was not available this morning. so. Uh, we wish him well, and we'll have him in a future episode. Yeah, and how did that go? I'm just, I'm just curious how Eric might have, might have pitched that because there's, there's, there's a few people that would sit with Steve and I in, a, in any situation. <laughs> I think, I think he asked me to come in and babysit. Is what he, is what he did. He really <laughs> say that? <laughs> no, no, Die. He didn't say that. That's a joke. All right, cool. Um, I'm producer in the Austin studio, visiting. LA this week. And Can I'm you say why you're visiting? Okay. <laughs> so oh, you. yeah. No. Can you tell us why you're visiting? What, what uh, I'm you visiting this week, um, syncing up with, with Eric Davis and the production team here. I'm, I'm here to discuss some, some animation things with Steve and uh, sync up with the, the tech design team here in, in LA as well. So it's been a very productive week. Mr. Bender? And I'm Steve Bender. I'm the animation director. And you've uh, you've not, really not been sure around for a while. What, uh, what have you been up to? I've been in Germany, actually, uh, and in the UK doing meetings, uh, working with uh, some of the uh, team members to sort of <clears throat> straighten out some of the uh, goal teams and goal groups that we're working on, things like that. Um, yeah. Well, let's jump right into it. Uh, we are going to be taking questions from the general chat and spectrum. We are not watching Twitch chat, so if you are... Uh, Spamming that, that's your business, but we're not going to be seeing it. Uh, first up, Sean, can you describe a typical day working on Star Citizen? What kinds of things are you involved with? Uh, wow. I mean, a uh, typical day working on Star Citizen, what are the kind of things that I'm involved with? Um, so the technical content team, um, and I sort of explained this in a, in a studio, or Eric actually explained it pretty well in a studio update. It's actually made out of two separate teams. Um, one is tech art, the other one is tech animation. And basically, um, the easiest way to describe the guys on my team um, is a technical animator is an animator that is technical. Um, basically, it's a guy that has the ability to script, make tools, um, and can basically go back and forth between animation and code and back to animation and code. Um, and th these are the perfect type of guys to support or to develop pipelines with animation. Uh, and then the same thing on the uh, technical art side, where we have artists that are technical. Um, and these guys, again, are developing the exact same sort of thing, pipelines and processes uh, for the general art teams, as well as improving processes. So day to day, um, it, it, it's a pretty uh, hectic day because uh, uh, much of it is spread across the entirety of the company. So. Uh, I'm not just working on the ship pipeline. I'm not just working on the character pipeline. I'm not just working on the animation pipeline. It's actually all of it at the same time. So uh, individuals will, uh, on the team anyways, are embedded within these teams. And then uh, it's a lot of feedback back and forth. And uh, what this game absolutely requires, and because the content is to such a scale, um, is, a, is an oversight across all those departments <coughs> to ensure that we're all doing things the same way, to ensure that we're not doubling up on work, which is super easy to do, especially when you've got uh, a studio in the UK, a studio in Frankfurt, and then a studio over here, and then another one in Austin. So it's really easy to even get the uh, uh, different people that haven't necessarily talked to each other working on like identical stuff. So you'll end up getting double work happening, and and and, and that's a real frustrating thing for guys, and as well as for uh, the teams that are receiving tools and things from us. Uh, on top of that, I really enjoy doing a lot of little R and D projects or uh, uh, novel implementations of things that uh, really haven't been done before. I really I really enjoy working on that. So I try to I try to do as much as that as possible. Um, but of course, uh, depending on the day. Um, there's, there's more or less time uh, for that kind of stuff. And then on top of it is just bug fixing, getting in there and uh, uh, sorting out problems that are actually within the game. 
day to day. So you're very much the glue that keeps this company together. I like to think so, but uh, you know, uh, with 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 anything, um, uh, it, it's not um, imperative uh, that you have a tech artist within a feature team or within a, within a process. But it does uh, 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 force multiply that particular team. Um, anytime you embed one of those guys in there, uh, they're going to make the process faster. They're going to come up with uh, solutions for things um, and be able to again, like develop content at the scale that we needed for Star Citizen. Uh, but it's very much uh, sort of like a a, a, a client. Um, uh, uh, delivering tools to a client, for example, would be delivering tools to Steve's team. Um, and uh, that can be sometimes easy, sometimes not so easy, right? Um, so, yeah. yeah. What, what kind of tools does he deliver to your team? Well, things like, for instance, as we're, we're doing a tremendous amount of work uh, on the story side with cin uh, cinematics, PCAP, things like this. And um, <clears throat> when they shot the, the performance capture, they went in and they uh, had an editor go in and do, do edits, like you would say in, in a movie or something like that. Um, and what that create, creates is like a multiple FBX files uh, with different time codes that are associated with them. Um, and that can actually be tricky and time consuming um, to stitch those together properly. Uh, in some cases, this took half a day to a day to do on, say, one scene. Um, Sean, we talked to Sean's team, and, and they put together a EDL importer that does the job in about 30 seconds. So, so like we, we were saying, <clears throat> it's a force multiplication thing. It's really to try to make these things faster, because if, if uh, the cinematics team continued to work that way, uh, we would take until, uh, I think you even scheduled it, it was something like 2025 or so, it's some ridiculous amount of time that if that was the way we were going to implement it, this is how long this was going to actually take. Yeah, the sun take. would burn out. Before, uh, pretty before much, we before we actually <laughs> ship Star Citizen. So, uh, and that's obviously un unacceptable on, on many angles. Um, so, yeah. Has there been any further development on the PVP slider since it was mentioned uh, early on? PVP slider. I'm not exactly sure what you mean by PVP slider. I'm not sure I just took the question. And that's the, uh, the idea of... Is there a slip and slide in this game? There's no slip and slide in this game. That's at home right. for us. Okay. Real life. Just for us. Real life. So we will update on that one in the future once we have the folks who are actually working on it. Uh, let's see. Is what we saw in ATV a couple weeks ago character creation or character customization? And what's the difference? Uh, uh, sorry, uh, the, the, the difference between a character creation and character customization? Is yes. That it? Yeah. Okay, yeah. so I've always made a distinction, and uh, this is really to preempt uh, what we are doing for your character creation as a whole. So uh, the first step of character creation is literally just selecting objects for your character, and that to me is, is customization of your character. And I mean, it really, the term doesn't really matter. It's, it's, you can use it generally. Oh, what are you doing over there? Oh. It's happy hour. It is happy hour, but it's well, it's afternoon. I guess you're okay. Uh, anyways, sorry to, <laughs> to go back in, in to go back into the actual uh, uh, the actual question. So uh, the terms tend to get used interchangeably. To me, uh, it, it's a two phased uh, kind of approach. Again, uh, we want to give you all the selection of your 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 character items first. So you select a head, a preset head. You select a body, a preset body. You select your clothing. You select your armor, um, and and you put your character <coughs> together. Now the next step of that is actually customizing it or changing it, right? And we've shown some of the DNA system, yeah. uh, which um, is something that you know we've been talking about and and developing. Uh, we haven't developed the DNA system itself uh, through this is coming from three lateral but we've been developing with that in mind. So all of our heads are implemented with a very specific set of rig logic so that once that system was online, that is exactly how we would actually be doing that thing. So we knew two years, well, uh, not quite two years ago, but a year and a half ago that we would be moving this direction and that would be the end game uh, for character uh, creation and customization. So to me, the, uh, the creation of your character, again, is just putting the pieces together and then the customizing of the character is actually pulling it around and making your own version of that particular character um, and coloring up your clothing for yourself, customizing your character. So creation, customization, kind of 
two stages. And the first stage that you guys are going to get is the selection of, of, of the preset heads, of the preset bodies, um, and, and, and putting the clothes and armor on. And then the next level uh, will be the actual uh, uh, pulling around of uh, different pieces of the face and, and getting it all combined. And one thing I did want to address within that, and it was just based on some uh, some of the Reddit threads that came out of uh, that, and, and as well as even some, uh, some YouTube videos uh, from Three Laterals presentation at, at GDC. Um, and a lot of people are like, oh, well, uh, cool. On the, on the face customization, they're just combining blend shapes between a bunch of different faces. And it is far more sophisticated than that. There's no way that you could do this blend shape sort of combination and still be able to animate those faces. <coughs> um, so the DNA system, and again, Three Lateral does a pretty good job explaining this within their uh, within their uh, within their presentation. But what it is is there's a whole set of rig logic constants that are sitting in this face, and your uh, your face is actually created by this these constants, this rig logic code, and that's what we call DNA. So when you're customizing it, there's like a dynamic DNA. This is the, this DNA is changing. So you're grabbing a bit of rig logic from this head, a bit of rig logic from this head, a bit of rig logic from this head, depending on where it is, and it's actually adjusting all the constants to, to suit. But all of those heads themselves have 444 blend shapes themselves already. So you're not having a base head that just has a bunch of blend shapes of all the other <coughs> heads. It's you have this base head that already has 444 corrective blend shapes within it, and when it animates, those blend shapes work. But you combine those rig logic constants onto the different areas of the face, and it will still animate correctly. So maybe to take it even higher level, if you were ever to just animate and export an animation for a particular face, the rig is in a certain configuration. So if we took Gary Oldman's animation, and we exported that on Gary Oldman's skeleton, and then we played that back on, let's say, uh, um, uh, uh, Captain White or Liam Cunningham. His face would strangely contort to the to the shape of Gary Oldman's face because all those joint positions are all coming from Gary Oldman's rig. Now, rig logic puts a generic, uh, and not really generic, but a, a, a generic control set, uh, but the rig logic constants are all unique per head. So if you can combine pieces of those rig logic constants, you never end up uh, uh, contorting that face. So uh, Liam Cunningham's face will retain its shape and still do the exact same animation that you exported off of Gary Oldman's head, rather than just you know assuming that shape. So hopefully that wasn't too, uh, maybe I got a little too deep with it. And it's really better no if I have some visual sort of, uh, some visual sort of guides. And, and we're gonna have a whole, I'm sure a whole ATV to talk about this. And I'd love, to, it'd be awesome if we could get Vlad out from uh, three lateral. But uh, again, we've implemented this right into the engine. And uh, yeah, it's gonna be really, really cool to see. And, and I can assure you that there hasn't been a customization system before, at least not that I know of, and I don't know, you know, everything. Um, but yeah, I, you well, I'd like to. Yeah, yeah. You come no, close. I, don't. I absolutely do not. <laughs> um, uh, m I've never seen a customization system being able to do that. So basically, be able to play normal animation and at you know a pretty true life fidelity, mm -hmm. um, and be able to change exactly how that particular face looks and still be able to play those same animations. So. Will helmet and ship HUDs return, or is it all multifunction displays from here on? Mm. And the helmet HUDs never really went away. Oh, for ships, though, right? Mm, like yes, when you're sitting in it. Uh, well, the main thing with our helmet HUD is that that was meant to give you uh, a bunch of FPS feedback. So how, how much ammo you have, what's your health. It's kind of your character HUD, really, is, and that's the one that goes on the helmet. Um, I don't know what the plan is uh, for ship HUDs and, and the helmet. Um, maybe. Steve has an idea, but I'm not so sure. We're not really the guys to answer that. And really, it's a design question more than anything. Mm. Um, it, there's no technical limitations going one way or the other. Um, but I'm pretty sure we're going to go with the MFDs in almost every single ship. Mm. But you're still going to have some sort of FPS HUD up there, because you have to know um, uh, the status of your character. I mean, what's your health? Um, because we're going to have, well, we already have them now, uh, the oxygen levels and all these other things, you're going to want that sort of feedback mm -hmm. whilst you're in the ship and still be able to get the feedback from the ship. So MFDs make more sense, I think. And what's next for first and third person player animations? January monthly report mentioned uh, foot anchoring, for example. OK, let's, uh, again, there's no first and third person, though, right? Mm -hmm. it's, mm. Very important. It's first slash there. <coughs> uh, well, for animation. Yeah, right. So it's so it's unified, and I mean that's a great question for Steve. Star Citizen works off a unified system, unlike say a, a traditional FPS where 
uh, you may be using the same skeleton, but the animations that are being played on third person and the ones that are being played at least on the hands on first person are um, uh, slightly different. Um, on Star Citizen, they're exactly the same. So what we've started doing is we've started building these, uh, these goal teams or feature groups. And what they're designed to do is to take uh, sections of a feature and put together an animator with a coder, with a designer, uh, to be able to start executing those things out. Um, Short-term sort of things that we're working on right now, for instance, the shouldered weapon, really getting the railgun uh, to feel like it's a, it's a ship downing weapon. Um, you know, you should be able to just pull this thing out and fire it and just feel like you have just let loose all hell. Um, That's going to be super on, important once we have the planets things. in there because, I, I, you know, you can see it right now. People firing at ships as they eat. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So, at, at the, you know, we're working on that from an effect side, from an animation side, from a code standpoint, um, it's, it's about feel, right? Getting everything to feel correct. We're working on as well things like, uh, Sean mentioned oxygen and stuff like that. We're working on oxygen and stamina. And uh, what does it look like when <clears throat> I'm got full stamina and I'm running up against something like a, a wall that I'm going to uh, to mantle up onto. Okay, well, what happens if my stamina goes down and down and down and down and down? There's a visual difference there, right? Same thing with when my stamina is basically gone and I'm, I'm just too exhausted to jump, I'm too exhausted to climb. Um, what does that look like? Um, as well, continuing with, we have new weapons uh, that are constantly uh, coming into our pipeline. Um, and ultimately, you know, making an FPS is not just the animation that goes into it, it's the code that goes into it, you know, all this, uh, but it's ultimately it's the feel. If it doesn't feel right, if it doesn't play well, um, you're, you need to be iterating on this until it does, so. It's the, not even, it's, you have that with the FPS side, but you also have that with the player animations for other things like getting in and out, in and out of a bed and, Absolutely. And, uh, and stuff like that as well. I know that we've been doing some polish animations in the first person, um, or polish passes on the first person animations for things like exiting a bed, mm -hmm. or sitting in a chair, and making sure that the camera's all situated right and all that. Exactly. We've also been uh, working on things like, for instance, uh, usables. Uh, if I'm an AI character and I'm going to be sitting here talking with you guys, drinking um, a cup of... What are you drinking there, Steve? Uh, it's clear. Um, it's either energy drink or vodka, it's, one of the two. It's water. Um, it's water. It's water. water. Um, energy but vodka. You, you, we need the AI to be able to walk in, sit down in the chair properly, to be able to grab the glass, to drink from it properly, to get back out. Um, and this is from just sitting down at a table like this, with a tray table, with food, with drink, um, at a bar, say in, in the nightclub and things like that, and also enabling the player to do those sorts of things. So um, we can have the player sit down at, at the mess hall and pick the glass up and use the glass, things like this. Um, and we're also moving forward on things for player interaction. So um, picking up, uh, aside from, say, a glass, but looting things, you know, stealing things from the world and, and stuff like that. Yeah, no, the player interaction is kind of an interesting thing. There's a lot of little challenges in there that you wouldn't really expect. Mm. Um, and, and, like, one of the big ones is just, like, mesh formats, for example. So a character generally is made out of skin files, mm. so these are the ones that deform and stuff. And, uh, you know, an interesting thing with the player interaction system is that it requires physics for the mesh that you're interacting with because when you go into your interaction mode, it's got a ray cast against something, and, oh, that's the thing I want to hit. Okay, great, mm. you got to pick it up. Problem is, is that these skin files don't have physics. So how do you interact with them? And it's like, it, it's all these little uh, niggling things um, uh, that take the time. Um, but again, once the system is in place, everything opens up, you know, 
the clouds open, angels sing. And <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, and I mean, it sounds like a small thing. Okay, AI, pick up a cup, great, big deal. Not going to make my game much more fun. But what it, do, what it does do is it opens up the ability for us to do everything else that those AIs need to do. That just happens to be the very controlled environment that we can do uh, this particular tech in. Uh, but then once that is, uh, AIs can pick up then weapons, they can do whatever sort of inspect and these kind of things. Um, AIs can pick up, uh, you know, um, uh, uh, pieces of the, the, the player even, or other AIs. Like, I mean, there's all kinds of crazy things. Yeah, it's about, it's about limiting the delta between, between systems when we're, when we're first w uh, working on them. Mm. Um, the, the same piece of functionality uh, and all the tech that gets my hand, whether I'm a player or an AI, to go to this object, this object is oriented properly, for me to pick it up and use it, is the same piece of tech that requires you when you go to, say, a shop, if a shopkeeper of some sort pulls a weapon out and gives it to you, exactly. it's, the same, it's the same tech. And that's the other thing in, in the goal teams, uh, we're also trying to get them to, um, instead of uh, say a, a typical task, which would be have an AI pick up a cup, um, it is a, a broader vision. So we want them to be able to pick up this and, and, and this, uh, this weapon and to give you this and to mm -hmm. put this away and stuff like that. Now that we know what that broad vision is for that, what is a singular test case that we can do exactly. to, to pound, pound on the issues? Yeah, exactly. Um, and I, I think it's important always to, to, to bring that up because I, I think a lot of times we do talk about these little pieces of tech and there's one implementation and everybody's going, well, what's a big deal? AI pick up a cup, who cares? I mean, you know, you could get away with that in, in, a, in a lot of other games, go play uh, you know, Morrowind or, or, you know, Oblivion to that effect. Mm. And, and look, the, you know, very little interaction within AI in the world. Hell, they even got the same voices when you start talking to different AIs. Mm. It's like, hello there, hello there. <laughs> you know, <laughs> Boy, um, it, it was, you know. In but about but five it's minutes, these kind I'm going to go get a bucket and I'm coming over. <laughs> <laughs> get 12 buckets and come back to me and then I'll give you the experience. <laughs> yeah, so. Um, so, yeah, I know, and I think it's important to, uh, to realize that, that the, the, there's bigger needs from, from those systems. And though we talk about the one specific example, it's a, it's a bigger thing uh, that we're trying to do. Mm. Also, those small things are just such a hallmark of Chris's games. It's, you know, the little hand on the cockpit of Wing Commander, it's what brings you into the universe. You know, yeah. the, the fact that we have characters who can carry around a cup sure. matters for Star Citizen. Sure. Absolutely. Sure. This one's for me. It says, uh, Ben, any updates on Gamescom Citizen Con plans? Um, no updates to share yet. We're very close. Um, Planning big fancy events in Germany means you cross your T's and dot your I's before you uh, mm. set up tickets or anything, but uh, and very near future. Umlauts. <laughs> <laughs> umlauts. Jawohl. Jawohl. All right, this one says, Steve, can you demonstrate what kind of animations you've been working on for melee and hand-to-hand -hand combat? That's somebody, somebody from the knows company. You. Yeah, That's that totally must be Jared. somebody from the company that's asked that. Can you please demonstate? So, <laughs> wait, wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. That's the that's dance mode. That's where we. This is a family it. family stream. So, yeah, I know, and we're trying really hard. We're trying really uh, hard not to swear, <laughs> not to. We have yeah, been, and we've been doing explicit. a good job. <laughs> yeah, and you like, are doing a good job. Doing a great job. Guys. And by the Keep way, this is a lot of pressure because it was like happy hour with Sean and Steve, and like it feels like we're, we got to sit here and just, you guys are make me happy for one hour, <laughs> and it's like. Uh, I feel well, like they said it was boring, happy but. hour. We can't drink. We can't swear. It's like. <laughs> It's not what's happy it's about happy hour this. for everybody you know else. This is this is Sean and Steve's unhappy hour because <laughs> this is not what a happy hour for reals. This is not <laughs> about guys. It's about the but anyways. Yeah. No, but, uh, maybe, so, maybe let's talk. Uh, can, can I? Can I? Can I? Uh, uh, sort of. Um, um, you want to frame it? Yeah, I want to frame, frame it. it. Yeah. yeah. You so, be my so in almost every single meeting with Steve, and I mean, I'm really upset that you don't have a prop, and maybe. Can we get, get this man? Hey, hey, can stage head? Can you go get <laughs> me one? Of, can someone get me a firearm in the, in my a office? Firearm? No. A, you want a banana? Airsoft. Want a banana. banana. Airsoft. <laughs> oh wow, that is perfect. No, we're good. It pays to carry a um, banana. So in every single meeting, and not just like actual boardroom type meetings, but like Skype meetings. Um, Steve 
Steve must, and you would expect this out of an animation director, uh, Steve must demonstrate. Um, Steve must demonstrate, do examples, and uh, yeah, I think, uh, no pressure, I mean, let's talk about pistols. <laughs> wow. Banana pistols. We, we, have, we have JJ right now going to get us a firearm. Um, <laughs> depending upon how fast he goes, this may be a, a long period of time for us sitting here and just... Well, why are we, <laughs> we I mean, just going to leave I, like that? Should I just, should I just start sing, you know? <laughs> While we wait, I can run through some of the various Jig Gross beard questions. Oh, Jig Gross beard, beard questions. questions. Okay. Right. Yeah, and sure. you'll notice that I gave up on mine. Because I heard that we were going to be on the same street. I'm like, I can't be. Yeah, why didn't you show me? I can't you're looking be. looking good, man. No, I was really itchy, man. Uh, you got to you gotta blow past. You got to play through the pain, man. You just got to play through the pain. Oh, wait. Nope. Here we go. All right. Well, so what, we what, what, what was Cross the question? Beard. Do you want to know? I, I want to know about his beard. Them. But I want to know about this first, actually. Cause so, Steve's man with the gun goes first. <laughs> yes, exactly. Is yeah, so, uh, see him, melee go. animations. Uh, things, it's just... Some of this is, is typical sort of things that you would expect to see, uh, where you're going to attempt to uh, come across and, say, punch somebody in the face. Um, if, if we would have some sort of sharp object on the end of this, uh, you might stab them uh, as well, coming in uh, with a butt strike to the face, something like that. Uh, one of the things that, that we're really excited yeah. about is, um, Sean? Yes, sir. Would you come with oh, me? Oh, absolutely, I would. And just look at the camera there. Okay. Is, uh, oh. is stealth kills. So we have various things where we're going to come up behind a guy and we're going to grab him <laughs> and, <laughs> and stab him and drop him. Uh, we've got one with, but you don't want to do the front one, do you? Uh, we actually have one where a character <laughs> Uh, hauls off between another character. Um, we've got left side ones this is awful. where a character will come in like, like it's, it's built into quadrants. So you have a rear, uh, a left side, a right side, and a front. So things like on the front side coming in and again here, <laughs> through, <laughs> through the back. Um, uh, I think for the front, we also have just a, just a straight on, um, you're here and it's just <laughs> like that. Um, up. Okay, I'm like going to sit back down. I feel abused. Oh. So. Whew. Well, that was exciting. Good stuff. Usually he doesn't use an assistant. I, that was, usually you don't get an assistant. That was. Yeah, did you notice I, I also help. didn't take out my pocket knife? That's true, that's good. So, Jake, are you willing to continue growing your beard until 3.0 is released? Until 3.0 is released? Um, I, don't know if my, I, don't know if, I don't know if my wife would uh, go for that, if I'm, if I'm honest. Uh, so, I'll grow it as long as I can, guys. No promises, though. You know, no, 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 no. He used to have, did you see him with the, he had this shaved off and this here? Oh, uh, yeah. And, oh, that was, that I had was, just the mustache yeah, for a little while. It's like it the great. Civil War general look. Yeah. Yeah, I Actually, yeah. I think, I think Tyler sent it out on the, on the uh, Star Citizen Twitter account at one point. So I think they've seen it. Hmm. it. That was awesome. But that lasted maybe a day, so. You had a little monocle and everything like that. <laughs> <you know? laughs> yes. I mean, all sorts of good ideas here. Sean, will Jake Ross's beard be one of the character DNA options? Uh, oh, perhaps, but I know what definitely will be, mm -hmm. and it's the Sean Tracy haircut. Ooh. Look at you guys. Yes. Every YouTube video, I at least see three or four comments. <laughs> Somebody tells Sean that he's balding behind. It doesn't take a whole lot of text. <laughs> no, I haven't seen that. To do I the had Sean no Tracy idea. Haircut. I went home after one of these ATVs and I read the YouTube thing, and it said. Somebody tells Sean, I said, what? I went to the bathroom and I screamed. So, despite all you guys, I'm going to put one in there. I'm gonna, I, 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 and if I That'll have to do it myself, character art was like, no way. I'm like, I'll do it myself. I don't care. Yeah. I will, I will make sure lowest, that is. It's going to be the lowest poly hair we have in the game. <laughs> but the shiniest. <laughs> <laughs> but the shiniest. Draw calls will be perfect. Yeah, draw calls perfect. <laughs> 
Yeah, I mean, of course we want nice, nice full beards. Um, and we want some fun ones too. Um, but actually beards are a tricky thing. And that's something that we, we definitely need to have a conversation with Vlad about um, in terms of how do you adapt the beard to different facial shapes and all this kind of stuff. You can get away with a lot of clipping and stuff, but yeah, that's a very, very nice full beard. <laughs> and doing beard and hair is just a tricky shading yeah. problem too. So. Steve, what kind of animation will uh, what kind of animation? <laughs> what kind of animation work do animals and plants get? Animals and plants. Mm -hmm. What kind of animration work do animals and plants get? Yes. Plants have first person, third person um, unification. First person, I think. third person plants. It, it, yeah, well, yeah. I mean, yeah. trees you got to take cover. They need to <laughs> mantling. Mantling like, trees are mantling, right? Uh, it, it depends. I mean. I think the, 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 it's kind of a difficult question to answer. Um, the animals will have, can you clarify that a bit more? Um, the, the animals, for instance, um, any animals that we have uh, in the game uh, will have a proper animation set for them. Um, so typically for us, uh, design drives a lot of what it is that the creature can do so um you know that way you don't have um a space deer doing doing jujitsu yeah. right what's and space? stuff like that that's the best mental image ever <laughs> a space deer doing jujitsu <laughs> it's like a, <laughs> what does a space deer sound like steve what is yeah what is <laughs> Uh, oh, man. Well, that, nothing is that's in space. Someone's no recording sound. this. <laughs> that sound is totally going, going off. The... Um, but, yeah. yeah. I, I hope that answered the question. I mean, it really is. Desi it's desi uh, I can mention the, the tree stuff, like how we actually get away uh, with not animating trees, because, of course, trees don't need to mantle and, you know, take cover and, and, and do locomotion. But trees do need to rustle in the wind. They need uh, to things bend, need to move around. Upon they the, need to the, bend uh, right. with the wind. Um, so, uh, uh, back at Crytek, this was a huge thing, right? Like, I mean, we had palm trees, we had mm -hmm. huge, huge forest trees, and they all needed to rustle in the wind, and the palm trees actually needed to bend and move around. So uh, we have a lot of the same uh, 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 technology that was being used for that. It had to be re-implemented in kind of a new way for the planets, um, and because of the sheer amount of them. Mm -hmm. uh, but we developed some tools to help the artist to mark up the trees in such a way. We actually use vertex colors. so. Every single channel does something a little bit different. Um, so, and you know, it, it's interesting that we keep talking about this because, like, zone culling used vertex colors and all these other things. But um, on, and I, I can't remember what exactly. I'm trying to remember what exactly each of the channels does. Uh, but one of them is like the intensity. One of them is the frequency, and the other one is like a masking. So basically, where it goes. Now, uh, the guys have developed some tools so that the the artist can actually mark this up a lot easier, so that they're not just grabbing individual verts and saying, "Okay, this one needs to move this much. This one needs to move this much." Um, and and we did develop a pretty good process back at Crytek to make sure that again the trees could bend in the wind, they could rustle in the wind, and, and uh, even better is when you walk through things like grass and yes. that kind of things, they bend away. We had touch bending and detail bending is what we call it. So detail bending is the sort of stuff that happens uh, with the wind, and then the touch bending is something that you, you walk through grass and things like yeah, that. It's, it's very visual effects uh, or physics, depending upon how, yes. how it works, oriented. It's not really a, um, it, it is animation in the sense that it, it moves, mm -hmm. um, but it's not. But it's vertex um, animation. It's, yeah, you it's, know. it's not you know, skeletal character animation or something like that. Right. Now, with regards to atmospheric flight, will the uh, different gravity of different planets impact the uh, flight model differently? Uh, yes, uh, that's what I understand <coughs> is happening. Um, now, I'm not directly involved with uh, John Pritchett and the IFCS work that happens uh, within the planet atmospheres. Um, but yes, I understand that that's already been done, actually. So it already takes that gravity into account. Now, what I don't know is that whether that gravity is variable right now within a system, if it reads what the planet is actually doing in terms of gravity, because the planets all have variable gravity already. Mm -hmm. um, and it's interesting because we could have just made it so that it was based on the size of the planet, um, and we could probably still do something like that. So the bigger planets obviously have more gravity and the smaller ones have less or whatever. Um, but am yeah, I, am um, I misremembering? Is, is gravity something that's already was already in CryEngine when we started? 
That sounds no, so there was no gravity in Crying really? Engine when we started. We just floated around in zero G in every single game. <laughs> no, I'm <laughs> just <laughs> teasing you. Um, yes, of course, we had gravity within mm. the Cry Engine. But uh, one thing to keep in mind was that the gravity was a, was a perfectly, you know, downward Z vector, mm. you know, like a oh, negative Z planet, vector. Yeah. Um, we didn't have the idea of, you know, a spherical gravity shape, right? So then when you're sitting on this side of the planet, being pulled to the center of mass mm. for the planet, um, that was never a concept that we had before. So our very very high level um, or low level. It's, it's, you know, that's funny. Whenever we talk about programmers sometimes, like a really good programmer, sometimes we say the high level programmer, but the best programmers are the low level programmers. So it's like saying a low level, our low level physics program, uh, Chris Rain. Um, should we just call them stuff. assembly programmers? We knowledge? should just, I don't know, we can just call them. I, I don't, I, I don't mean, want to say anything bad about them because I need all kinds of work from them. <laughs> so we should call him uh, a Mr. Awesome. Mr. <laughs> Chris. Know. Uh, no, Chris, Chris Rain. Rain. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, and also yeah. Chris Roberts. All the, all the Chris's. All the Chris's. We're getting into trouble. Let's move on. <laughs> with, regards to, with regards to melee and hand-to-hand, -hand, will there be counters? There are uh, currently uh, design discussions on um, full hand-to-hand -hand combat. So... Um, a couple months ago, I did some just rough block outs for uh, punching, punching, blocking, uh, and things like that. Um, counters, these are all, these, the, the, the quick answer to this is uh, probably. <laughs> um, uh, there, yes. there are um, design docs floating around for things like this. We have talked about um, Things like what happens when you get into a bar fight or something like that. Um, uh, the, the piece of technology that actually creates the stealth kill result mm. would be in part some of that same technology that creates a counter. So if you're just going to do a block, um, you don't really need anything from the other character, right? Your, your hand's just going to go up and you're going to block or something like that. Um, but if you're going to counter, like you're, you're going to do, uh, he, he's going to come barreling down on top of you with something and you're going to, to go into like a, I don't know, like a Shomenuchi Riminage or something like that. What? You need, to, you need you? the two characters to be um, in sync. And that in sync connection then um, is the same yeah. piece of technology that would be a takedown. Yeah, and maybe to to <clears throat> manage expectations here a tiny bit too. Like we're not talking dishonored level, you know, type type melee combat, and we're not talking, you know, a for honor or or, or or anything quite quite as involved, right? This isn't the core of the game. We're gonna have we hope to have pieces of that, of course. Um, yeah, I can't even say where where. It's supposed to happen, but uh, uh, yeah, um, just to yeah, maybe manage the expectations. They're a tiny bit. We're not making this honor. Uh, <laughs> is the thing. So a lot. I mean, a lot of the 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 further down the line melee system stuff is is scheduled for later on this year. Sure. So. Jake, you hosted the uh, studio update on ATV yesterday. Yeah. Is is there anything you didn't share that you wish you could have? Oh man. Um, Yes. More um, of his smile. More beard. Oh, more um, beard. I wish my beard had been longer. Um, no, uh, I, there's a, there is work going on in Austin on a specific ship that we have not uh, talked about yet. And I wish I could have shown that off. Um, but that will come in due time. Yes, it will. Yeah. Very, I don't even that know was very good tease. About. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! There are many challenges to making Star Citizen. Where's this weapon? Yeah, what's the biggest one, of them, the one of them is the one of them is this got. Yeah. And again, so, we share. Yeah, yeah. Well, what, what's one challenge you're working on now, and how are you able to overcome it? Seems like a job interview. <clears throat> what are your strengths and what are your weaknesses? My superhero would be the Green Lantern. Boo. Boo. I'm just kidding. It wouldn't be my superhero. Nobody's superhero is the Green Lantern. <laughs> <laughs> no, 
Nobody's like, man, I, the <laughs> Green true. Lantern, he really stands he was out. Awesome. I, like that guy. Uh, I don't know. I, every day is, is chock full of challenges. Um, the, the difficulty, I think, in talking about a couple of them is like, uh, I don't know that we're going to overcome it or um, I don't know that I'm going to solve it in, in a particular way or whatever. Um, I don't know. But if we don't know, we'll never stuff know. That we hit this morning. I mean, actually, scale extensions are messing up right now. That's a pretty fun thing. Um, this is pretty frustrating, actually. Um, we talked a lot in the character customization stuff that we uh, showed in terms of the port setups and uh, attaching different armors and the helpers moving and all this kind of stuff or it works fairly well, um, except we've run into a tiny bit of an issue with um, a similarly named joints and the joint ID, um, the joint ID is getting mangled basically. So uh, a, a joint thinks it's in one place um, in the animation but actually it's in a different place in the character. So I've got an awesome video just from uh, one of my senior tech artists this morning. I think you saw it as well with uh, a guy that, you know, we've reattached a, a torso piece to him and all of a sudden- Was that the, the nose going? <laughs> yeah, and, and also, well, his head detached. So his head is now on his, on his fore knuckle uh, because <laughs> the ID, like, like it's on the middle finger, but that's his root now of his head. It's cool because he can still talk. So, so, but no, like you've got the legs, the chest is over here, and maybe we can, I don't know if we'll share the video, it looks pretty awful, so. But you got the legs, the chest is right beside it, and then the head is out on the hand, and then we play animation on it, and it kind of looks pretty reasonable. The chest does the thing, the legs do the thing, but they're all kind of weirdly <laughs> attached and separate. So, I mean, that's an issue we run into right now, and uh, uh, working with Paul Ryan Dillon, trying to, trying to work that out, and Evil Herzeg back in, uh, uh, back in Frankfurt. Well, we can, we can solve this easy on the lore side. We just say it's a space mutation. No, I that, said- That's what happens in I here. said proceed Procedural characters, <laughs> job done. I, right? I think, if we need spore creatures, we're good. Yeah. Well, I think I think the the answer from my side would be that a lot of the stuff that we're doing, uh, because it, it involves multiple departments um, and uh, multiple different people's expectations, is that <clears throat> it's it, it's I use this example from time to time in that pick an object, let's say a cup, right? Um, and I say to you, um, I, need, I need a cup, right? Likely, um, you're not going to model this exact cup, right? You're gonna give me something else, but that's not what I'm expecting. I'm expecting this cup. I'm sorry, I'm just- Two that. cups. No, no, let's not go there. Um, <laughs> so, the setting the expectations, being able to say, okay, we're going to work on uh, breathing and and stamina and what it not only like the final result that the player should be able to feel or play within the product, um, the way that we tend to solve this is by removing <clears throat> as much um, sort of outside requirements. Um, as we can. So we, we take code out of, of the equation at first. We take um, animators, we put them together, obviously with the goal team, where the programmers are, the designers are, the animators are. We talk about what we're trying to achieve and we create the animations uh, as a previs, basically, to say this is ultimately what this needs to look like, what this needs to feel like then we're able to take um, that result and we're able to put it in front of people and say, this is what we're trying to achieve, mm -hmm. how do we get there? Yeah. It's a hell of a lot easier for me to get a model of this mug if I send you the picture of the mug and then you guys go, okay, well we have to model this and look at the specularity of that and oh, this, kind, this is kind of a matte finish here, then it is for me to go give me a mug, not that mug. Mm -hmm. Yeah, not that either. Yeah. But like, can you make it black, but not that black? Right. Right? So I think that, that's super, super important for things um, being successful, uh, communicating um, between uh, different departments and, and also within the goal team and being able to sort of, you don't want to get deep into these things and then someone go, oh, uh, 
Yeah, yeah that's not what I meant. Yeah. Yeah. And these, and these and two things happened. that we just mentioned here, you were talking about str struggles or, <coughs> or you know, you have bugs that are introduced mm -hmm. that you have to work through and solve, and just these R and D type type phases of of, um, of these features that we do are huge. Um, things you have to take into consideration when you're scheduling, when you're creating schedules. Yeah. Because like, you, don't, you don't know what bugs are gonna come up. Yeah. You don't mm -hmm. know how long certain R&D tasks are gonna take. So these are things as production that we have to take into account. And sometimes we're, we're, at, we're extremely accurate depending on how much experience you have and the thing you're working on. But sometimes we're way off just because we don't know what we don't know. Yeah. And uh, so when we're creating schedules that, that uh, we're putting out, uh, to you guys, you know that's something that we're we're absolutely keeping in mind. Is is uh, okay? What kind of bugs, uh, bug fixing time do we need to allot for this, and what kind of uh, R and D time do we need to allot for this as well? So sure, and a lot of times, like uh, another thing that comes up too is like reviews um, of, of particular assets or particular things that we've done or particular features. Even um, a lot of times, like uh, in, in the past, anyways, the schedule had been such that you know we we didn't allot for a lot of review time. So at the end of it, the feature came in, whatever was online. And maybe I reviewed it or Steve would have reviewed it. Let's say it's an animation, for example, and actually Steve's not fully happy with that, but in, in mm -hmm. such a way that actually we're out of time. So, uh, sorry, yeah. Steve, you know, I know you don't like it, but guess what? It has to go, mm -hmm. you know? So, yeah. you know, that's, that, it, a lot of that uh, just comes out of, um, I think, organizational um, uh, maturity uh, in terms of, you know, the organization is maturing as a, and producers um, and, yeah, and as we created and like those feature teams and things like that we said well you know uh, we, we want to have characters going in let's say a mess hall we want to have characters going in sitting down uh, having a, a proper AI schedule where they go through their their days yep uh, you know they get up they they go they sit down they eat something they go to the bathroom they do you know X Y and Z um, so we could we create animations for it, they could create code for it, whatnot and whatnot. Um, but when those things were, were split apart, what you were getting is you were getting animations and you were getting code, but the two things didn't always mesh. So what That's we right. did is we, we said, okay, s stop. We're going to create, as we talked about, this simple delta um, and put together an animator, a coder, a designer, uh, a tech guy, and said, this is what we're trying to achieve. And we would start, uh, let's say on a Monday, and uh, two Fridays after, we have an official review. So every two weeks, they're putting out, in a way, a little bit of a, a mini product, Yeah. right? Where we can say, great, show us that in the game. Show us that in the level, sure. right? Um, and during that, that time period, um, I'm able to talk with the animators involved or the leads involved with that and say, oh, let's, let's keep this in mind, let's adjust this, I like what you're doing here, let's do more of this, let's do mm -hmm. more of that. But what it also does is it gets the animators to work with the designers and together they come up with, with solutions to things that we may not have foreseen uh, from, from the get-go. They're like, oh, well, wait a minute, um, if we have all the cups, sitting on the table, right? And, and we say the character goes and just reaches that cup. The guy next to him has the cup in the same spot, mm -hmm. okay? So what if they both go to reach the cup at the same time, right? Now you got five or six doing that, looks like the raquettes, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> so instead they said, well, what if we just did something simple like this? And then this one's over here. Okay, so now what they're doing is within the, the goal and the vision for what it's supposed to look like, mm. they're actually going in and, and driving the feature themselves as well and um, making decisions that head towards that goal. And because they're doing that on a daily basis, we're able to head off a lot of these issues um, that we may have had previously where, sure. uh, you know, say something would fester for, for a couple weeks um, or someone would do what was on the task list, mm. but not necessarily what was fully intended, right? right. And because that, the, those people are now working together as a group, they're like, hey, this works, but that thing doesn't. Oh. Yeah. Okay, I didn't realize that was a secondary portion of this. Yep. Hold on, 
let me, let me work on this for a little bit, I can get back to you with it, sure. right? And it, it makes it more uh, exciting and, and more where the teams are able to, to, to almost self-manage themselves far more efficient. and we're able to actually sure. direct yeah, in, yeah, in and a it's and it, way. yeah, it's just it's so much more efficient, and uh, you know a lot of this might have been obvious to, to some people, but uh, you know the, the the company again has matured and grown in in a pretty organic way. Mm. So we we have to make these things very clear, and like this is something that needs to happen this way. This is more efficient, and just like we iterate on technology, we have to iterate on our on our production process. Yeah, and, and that's Absolutely. really what we're doing. And even right now, we're sort of we're in a sort of half half and half basically we've got very linear kind of pipelines right mm -hmm. so like the ship art pipeline for example is it's it's you know that is like a an assembly line right mm -hmm. now like the that is machine. perfect and there's no you know you're not going to make a, a a feature team for the, or a goal team for the ship art pipeline because things are very very solid um but they're they, they are but, in their own goal team in a way in that like for instance the the guy the animators in atx um they they worked very closely with the ship art team to create um, a system that would allow the ship art team to have a lot of flexibility in the the visual look of the ships. Um, but for instance, like if I put a, a stair here, and then on the other ship I put a stair here. Did you notice the difference? Right. Um, <laughs> If we can keep Sorry. the, the if we can keep the Everyone's stair here, staring at Bender's um, banana. <laughs> <laughs> That's a story of your life, right? Yeah. So, <laughs> um, uh, but we if Looking we if we can keep mm -hmm. the Sorry. things the the places that the player um, connects to a ship in um, similar metrics. I think there's something like. 29 separate metrics for just entering at the moment, wow. right? Um, we are able to spend time creating um, solid animations for those, and the ship team is able to go and create as many ships as they, as they want. They utilize portions of those templates, um, and it enables us to be able to get ships out sooner to, to you guys than we did before yeah, and now that, sure. now that team moves like sure. this they they know how to do this stuff inside and out and it's like mm -hmm. hey we got a new ship coming in cool which which metrics do you want to use oh we're going to use this for the enter we're going to use that for the exit mm -hmm. we're going to use this cockpit thing not a problem we can set this up and yeah. it's it's so much smoother and and yeah it's it's a perfect example of a, a team that um, initially had all these disparate parts yeah. that, that began to, as they started working through this process, now, now they've got a solid process. Sure. Right there, there. And don't forget, this is all people in different studios, too. Yeah, right? Across absolutely. different time zones, so it's incredibly LA, complex. Austin, mm -hmm. um, and UK. Yeah. I mean, it's just... Yeah. Yeah, it's incredibly complex. So, well, let's wrap this up. Um, okay. Well, I hope it was a happy hour. I, it was I mean, kind of happy being parts. A very there interview. Was... I hope so. <laughs> uh, well, thank you guys for coming on. Um, anyone out there who is at PAX East in Boston, be on the lookout for uh, Jared and Tyler Prime. They, uh, I don't know if they have anything to give you, but I'm sure they'll want to talk to you. Um, tell them I said hi. <laughs> uh, thanks, everybody. We will see you next week on happy hour. Cheers. Cheers. Yep. Mulligan. Mulligan. <laughs> <laughs>
Um, we forgot we had something. Yeah, so uh, what you're looking at here, guys, is um, this is the FPS feature test level. And what you can see here is a, a tremendous amount of bugs and random nonsense that's happening. Um, that little by little we're, we're working the kinks out of. But what this is doing is the, the whole goal of this is that I'm able to start off at the beginning of the level and run through everything uh, till we get to the end. Where it's smooth, you can see there's a counter on the left-hand side that's telling me how long it takes for me to get there. Um, I'm able to run through a lot of the, the features, the vault, the mantle, um, cover, for instance, and things like this. Um, and it's a very quick way for me to sort of get the, the status of uh, the, the FPS overall. Uh, the this particular that area, that's cool. This particular area here is uh, lava. <laughs> so um, this, this Steve lets us lava. know like this is, this is the thinnest object in the game basically that the distance wise that you should be able to traverse on. Um, here I did it really well. Often I fall into the lava because I'm a bit of a putz. Um, <clears throat> you can see here, uh, we're able to kick out, just like you guys, uh, we're able to kick out the third person and uh, review the, an the animations. Um, uh, the lighting on this level has, uh, is, is an uh, issue we're working on, a work in progress that's going to be, be updated. Yeah, but it's um, not like the players ever see it, so yeah. as long as it looks, <laughs> as long as you can see yourself, I guess. Um, you know, here's, here's the weapon arsenal. So being able to test, uh, test fire on this, we also have uh, ranges, uh, that's 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, and I don't know if you could see this one, you'll see it eventually, but that tiny little green square there, that's 100. Um, yes, that's me pegging things at 100. <laughs> yeah, but if you ever went to the range with Steve for reals, well. Yeah, I can't hit the broadside of a barn <laughs> from two feet. Um, but uh, oh, you can see here, you, you notice this is bugs and all. Um, so, you know, we do have some, some bugs uh, that are showing up in this, and that, that enables us to sort of get a baseline as to where things are. Um, Try interaction stuff. Yeah, player interaction. So, picking up boxes. Obviously, his pickup animation uh, didn't appear to play properly there. Um, walking. Um, oh, cool! The EVA thrusters. Apparently, are on. <laughs> his EVA thrusters are still on and things like this. Um, but this is I. I spend at least an hour. Um, every day uh, in this level, um, reviewing stuff, recording things, making notes, um, putting uh, tasks on the backlogs for the different groups, uh, goals on the different backlog uh, on the backlog for different groups. Um, you know, here's the gray cat. Obviously, the the view on the gray cat way way too stable. Um, so. Today, oh, yeah. I may actually go in and modify the eye stabilization parameter of that. In sure. Anakin. Well, it's probably because we didn't put G-Force on that like we did with the Ursa rover. Oh, okay. Well, we Maybe could probably make sense. look into it today. Maybe we can oh, that's a good idea. Yeah, just a little. kill that bug. Um, that's good stuff. Yeah, so this is melee, some melee stuff. That's what you were doing to Sean, right? Yep. Yep. Uh, did I do a takedown in this? Oh, I may not have done a takedown. It's okay. Let's bring the, the feedback up, and you can do it live here with Sean. Um, but we also, one of the AIs, if you noticed him, I was shooting at him earlier. Um, he's also enabled for takedown, so I can, I can run up behind him and, and stab him in the back and stuff like that. Um, it's like a private torture chamber for AI for you. <laughs> Yeah, the video. yeah, basically, huh. you know, we could pick up grenades and throw grenades here and, and all sorts of things, so. Cool, next time we should have videos to just chat about. It'd be fun. Mm -hmm. I can dance if you want. 
Well, all right, everybody, thank you again. I uh, hope you enjoyed that animation and uh, learning how uh, Steve's process works. We'll see you next time.